<laughs> Welcome to another segment of Lore You Should Know. I am Greg Tito, and I'm joined by... Adam Lee. Adam Lee. And this is where we delve into little bits of Dungeons and Dragons lore for funzos. Yeah. Uh, But you might also be able to use these specific topics uh, in your playthrough of Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus uh, Uh uh, when it comes out on September 17th. Um, So today we're going to be talking about Candlekeep. Candlekeep. Yes, the, the great library. It is a wonderful the library. Realms, yeah. Um, we were saying uh, that it would be the place that we would want to live in. Oh, my. Oh, my, yes. yes. Yeah. I have I did a lot of thinking about Candlekeep, and uh, it's, uh, it's just so cool. Yeah. yeah. There's just so many cool things going on there, and there's so many great adventures you can play there, and uh, it's very interesting and just endless amounts of fun. We've uh, we've talked about Candlekeep, I think, on a Lori Cheneau previously, uh, yeah. but that was more uh, general kind of history. Yeah. But we're going to talk about more under the context of uh, how it appears in uh, this adventure. So, yeah. Um, but that being said, can you give us a little bit of a general overview of of, of what Candlekeep is and and, and yeah. uh, its history? So Candlekeep, yeah, it was long, long ago. Um, it was a it was a keep, and uh, and then eventually became this this library, um, and. Uh, has kind of built up over the the years, centuries, whatever. It's like it's it it. There are these towers that are all connected by crazy bridges, and and uh, one tower is built by another, and on one's built on top of another, and and so the central keep is this area that uh, you uh, you enter into. But then once you are granted access to Candlekeep, um, then you can move in and you can go through the the massive halls and libraries. And then past those libraries, there are even greater um, these towers where resident wizards and scholars and sages and all all manner of uh, you know learned folk learned folk yes um, live and and study and read and and do experiments and all this stuff. So, um, would you equate it to like a like a university now? No, it, well, it, it's in some ways, um, it's not necessarily a university where, you know, people, f- uh, you know, kind of apply and go in and, and study. It's it's more, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it is kind of like a university, but it's its its, its own you, weird thing. Like yeah. a library of Alexandria yeah, type thing? Yeah, it's more like a library of Alexandria. Like the people who, the monks who sort of run the place. Um, they um, they are they are aware that they hold a repository of knowledge like no other on Toral, and um, and so they they defend it. And they're monks of a a god called Aluando. 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 And the the they are um, you know the, the 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 voice of Aluando can be heard on the on the on the the, the wind. And, really? Uh, yeah, and so you in the there there are people who walk through and they they chant the chants of Aluando, and uh, so there is this sort of mystical component to um, you know this this keep this order of monks that take care of this place, um, but yeah, so if you were to walk up to Candlekeep, you would get to the main gate, and one of the ways to enter uh, or the way to enter is that you have to have a book that is not in the keep, which is a hard sort of task to acquire like and you can have um like say you have a copy of a book um but it's a different edition um they'll accept that okay so so you 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 know you can have a duplicate but it's got to be different in some some manner um and then once you present that book they take it and then you're allowed to to gain access this of course being the main way that they they collect books yeah collect new books yeah yeah so they're just all these people who are coming in they're just constantly you know, just amassing more and more books. Now, does that have to happen each time you enter, or once you do that once, you have entrance no, it, into Candlekeep? E- I think it's each time you enter. Each time, yeah. So that's why people live there. It's because, yeah. like, well, I don't want to have to find another yeah. book. <laughs> like you've got a, your your reason for going there has to be like legit. Like you've got you've got a serious reason why you want to be there. Yeah. Um, and then once you enter, you enter into this sort of magical ward where there's no fire. You know, there's because of you know books would you know and all these ancient scrolls would just go up so. Um, and you're, you know, not allowed to use you know, certain magic when you're there. No fireballs um, allowed. No fireballs allowed. There's a so, sign up on yeah, the wall. Yeah, it's just like strictly no fireballs <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. So uh, and then you're, you know, you you sort of make your case, and then the 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 monks who are there, they kind of direct you to other people, and um, and then you're kind of shuttled to where you need to go, and then um, and then you're allowed to peruse the 
the you know the grand halls and and um, and what they'll do is um, they'll eventually get you to a room where you you just hang out in that room and then you sort of give your book that you want to um, one of these um, I think they're called speakers um, mm. one of the speakers and then uh, that that person will then go get your book and bring it back oh so you're not allowed to run roughshod through Candlekeep however um, on special cases and if you appeal to the monk uh, the, the first reader um, you're allowed you know that, that the first reader might grant you access to, to more and more hidden and more and more sort of grand areas where um, the books are kept. So, so the first reader is the the leader. Yeah, the the, the head monk. Yeah, the head monk. And uh, I like that. Is that are there second readers yeah. and third readers? Yeah, and then there's like the 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 keeper of the green gate or there 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 are all there are all these different um, sort of uh, titles that mm. are there, and I don't remember them all, but um, I like there's a hierarchy. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and you know some sometimes the first reader doesn't get along with the other one, or there, there's like little jockeying for positions or. Or you know, it could be that everybody's you know all hunky dory and it all works out. But um, but yeah, uh, the place runs really smoothly, and there are mysteries in Candlekeep. Like, not all of Candlekeep is completely explored. Um, there may be secret rooms that nobody yet knows about. Huh. Um, there are catacombs underneath of it, and some say that there is a spirit of a silver dragon that lives there, oh. uh, called Miram. And uh, that's that you might be able to encounter that spirit inside that place. So that's fascinating. Um, and you know, thinking about it, it's like, oh, you know, is it? Uh, you know, are there rooms that are magical? You know, where books are floating about, or mm. or are there ghosts of uh, ancient scholars that that you know could tell you something? So yeah, I bet if you know the the kind of closed nature of it as well as the people living there that there would be lots of people who have died there and oh, yeah. their spirits would be bound to that area if they were so inclined yeah yeah, yeah. so you that's know, fascinating yeah. kind of, it kind of brings in like Hogwarts and, and like all these other things that were most likely inspired by Candlekeep yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah I, I love that yeah yeah you know the, the, there's the, you know uh, so so for uh, Descent of Vernus um, we knew that you know, you were going to be in Baldur's Gate. You were going to get sort of involved in this, in this, uh, you know, devilish sort of plot. And you were to, you know, realize at some point, like, oh, you know, this, we're, we're, we're going to be heading down into the Nine Hills. Nobody knows about this place. What are we going to do? How are we going to deal with this? Oh, my gosh. And uh, so part of it directs you, the, 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 the adventure directs you to um, going to Candlekeep to get information from a diabolist. Um, named Silvera Savicus, and she mm. is a tiefling um, who has studied these infernal realms um, because she is she has kind of had her finger on the pulse of what's been going on in in in, in Avernus, and she's had her finger on the pulse of what's going on in the material plane, and she yeah. knows that there's there's doings going on. So, is because well, it relates to to this portion of of what you're talking about, um, is the the deity and the monks good aligned in, in candle yeah. you know, so they're, they're generally, you know, uh, oh, yeah. uh, altruistic. They want to help the world. They want to help people. Yeah. Um, and does a diabolist in that setting, uh, are they, uh, an anomaly? Are they, you know, would you say that they're neutral or, or, or evil aligned or is it, um, well, or, or is she interested in it t- for the redemption type of thing? Yeah, she's interested in studying it for to understand your foe, to mm. understand your enemy. I see. Um, and all types of things are studied at Candlekeep. So demonologists are there, um, and we were talking about well, there's there's you know a tower that is warded, and only you know experiments for to create portals, it, you know, and to summon demons and to summon devils and to summon you know, foul things from the far realms, like things go on in Candlekeep that are dangerous, mm. you know. And so the wizards who are there um, have created um, warded towers that these experiments can take place in, but they can only exist within this tower. I see. Um, they might even create demiplanes within um, Candlekeep that you go to this um, wizard's tower and you'll see a demonologist there, and they're like, "Well, to do this experiment or, or to encounter this this entity, we have to go into this demi plane that's warded, and and then do the experiment in there, and then come back and take our notes and write down what we experienced and all oh, that." Cool. So, 
it's kind of like CERN, you know, or, you know, the Manhattan Project, like right. things where there are these tremendous forces that are being toyed with that people aren't so sure what's going to happen. Like there was the idea that they were going to drop the hydrogen bomb and then all of a sudden it was going to ignite the atmosphere. Like that was a real thing. And they were like, well, do we do this? Right. You know, and they're saying, well, my calculations say that it shouldn't do that. So go ahead. Um, <laughs> but so you don't know until you try don't it. Don't know right? until you try it. Yeah. So, and, and that's kind of what a candle keep, the fun part of candle keep is about is that, that there are these things that are going on in here there you know like like i said studying the far realms you know it's like who knows what you're going to contact out yeah. there and it's full of just really powerful elder gods and you know patrons for warlocks like you don't want to be monkeying around there but there it, but you know we must know these things we must write these books about them so yeah. so they have these these scholars and researchers and wizards that are doing this kind of stuff and and maybe you know who out throughout candle keeps history i'm sure there's been a, a moment where the a one tower just gone <laughs> and it's just rained you know blocks down and they're like oh my gosh All right, you know? time to rebuild yep yep so and so <laughs> must have like forgot to you know put their spell up so you know candle keep has this history of not only being you know the the store of ancient history of you know who knows what could be the, the multiverse yeah but they're also at the cutting edge of understanding what magic is uh what uh these what these different planes of existence are mm -hmm. um be, it's it's full of, of of that so in a way it is it is like that university setting where mm. There are, you know, you have your, you know, Harvard library and then you have your professors that are sort of stationed and they're doing, you go into their, their office and you see all this weird equipment and you, they're up to these crazy things and they're like, come in, come in, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. And, right. And you're like, oh, so, um, so yeah, to adventure in Candlekeep is this, is the first initial step is, is to go into the sort of the keep itself and to, to, there's a, a big sort of grass field that you can kind of sit and discuss, you know, with scholars and monks and with other visitors there. And you can talk about theories and ideas and what they're into. And so you can run into so many interesting, cool characters that are up to stuff. Um, and as you get deeper and deeper into these layers, um, you start to learn more and more about the, the keep. And the, then you get to, you know, if you're lucky enough, you can enter the libraries. And um, then they're just like giant rows of books, you know, that are, you know, you know, stories high. And then if you get into the deeper layers, you can actually enter these towers where the experimentation where the happens. experimentations ha are happening and professors and wizards are, are studying things. Right. And that's so. where the, the, Dia the Di <laughs> Diabolist you yeah. mentioned? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. You have to think about that one before you say it. Yeah. It's like job list. Job. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's where Silver is at. And um, so she's been there for, you know, uh, you, have to, you have to do a decade of sort of uh, service at Candlekeep before you're actually allowed to be admitted into um, being a resident there. So, so she's been there for a while and uh, she's done really good work and she's kind of been, you know, she's kind of got her renown. And so you, um, you meet somebody in Baldur's Gate who, who knows what her work is and understands that, you know, she's sort of the person you need to contact. And yeah. so then that's where you go to sort of get your information and kind of get your feet under you and uh, to uh, or prepare yourself for this adventure that you're going to go on. You're going to go to a, a world and a realm in Avernus that is so alien and so different. And um, you, we needed sort of like a, a, a way to onboard players who maybe have never heard of the Nine Hells and they don't know anything like that. It's like there might be some players that really know that and they, you know, but metagaming aside, it's like, you know, the characters, none of the characters potentially have ever been there. So right. the characters would not know much, only like things that they've heard from their, you know, when they were wee, wee lads and lasses. <laughs> um, and th then they then they start to get this information, like here's what you're going to be facing and here's what the devils are like and here's what you've got to look out for and here's things to help you out along the way. So that's going to be a great tool for the dungeon master to yeah. get that information across that doesn't feel like... I'm the dungeon master, yeah. and I'm telling you this stuff. It's yeah. like, here, here, you know, because I, I hope that the players would play their characters in such a way as where they're like, yeah. we need to find out about this before we go in, and yeah. what better place to find it than in a, in a location like Candlekeep. Yeah, and so, you know, then so you have this this opportunity to study and, and, and kind of get information. 
And, you know, something as simple as like, you know, silvered weapons, like, okay, devils, you, you, you cannot use your normal swords against them. You know, it's yeah. like, you've got to have silvered weapons. Um, at the or, very least, or, or magic items, right? Yeah. Or uh, magic weapons. Well, yeah, well, that's with, like, demons. So if, if, you, oh. if you're like, well, we're going to go maybe potentially encounter the blood war and there will be demons down there, it's like, okay, well, now you're going to need magical weapons to deal with that. So yeah. it's like, okay. So these things then start to, and if, you know, depending on how what the DM wants to do and how the players sort of approach it, um, it could go into, like, what does each individual um, devil, what are they like, what... You know, what do you have to work, look out for when you're facing a chain devil? Or what do you mm. have to look out for when you're facing a, you know, a barb devil or, or a pit, know, fiend, pit or, fiend? Like, yeah. God forbid. Like, if you <laughs> God's ever, forbid. God's, that's right. God's forbid. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if, 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 that, if that's the case, um, you know, what do you have to deal with there? So, um, so yeah, it's a, to be a, a giant sort of. Uh, that's, you know, just, that's awesome. Yeah. You, is there. Uh, Built into the adventure, the idea that like you know the player characters might spend a lot of time in Avernus and therefore have more information uh, that is not in Candlekeep about the current state of affairs. There is there a debrief session yeah. uh, where you go back to Candlekeep and be like, "Here's everything that we learned." I think that would be totally fun. Yeah, I, would, I mean, in fact, I love that. That that's a great idea. Um, you know, to have a maybe there's even a character who's in the party who is sort of a a scribe. Oh, or a scholar of their own right. Yeah. yeah. And so they're just like, this is awesome. Like, I'm, I get to go with an adventuring party um, down into this, this realm, and now I'm going to get to take notes. Yeah. And I'll come back with, you know, a scroll of such value. You know, you present that to the monks at Candlekeep, and they'll be like, roll out the red carpet for you, buddy. Come on in. You yep. get to be uh, a, a diabolist <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> yeah. You know, join the for team sure. if you want to. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it, that, that's a cool idea. Yeah, that's really fun. Yeah. I love it. Cool. Yeah. Um, anything else about Candlekeep that you think we should, we should get out there? Um, Any fun ba-ba. details, things about uh, – uh, wh- where exactly is it in the geography of, of the Sword Coast? Yeah, so if you uh, are sailing down the river, Chianthar, and you get to Baldur's Gate, mm-hmm. and then you kind of go south and west and get to the coast. And yeah. Candlekeep's kind of right on a cliff – uh, like a cliff promontory that kind of goes out into the ocean. And uh, yeah, it's just off this this road. I think it's called the Lion's Way. And you, you go down the, this this road from Baldur's Gate and you follow the coastline and you just hop on on this little road and you go up to Candlekeep. So yep, southwest <laughs> of Baldur's Gate. It's uh, not too far. Yeah. I think uh, uh, in the video game Baldur's Gate, it's three screens down and yeah. you know, <laughs> four screen, screens screens west screens over, or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, in miles, it's about it's it's less than a hundred miles away from, oh, yeah. from Baldur's yeah. Gate, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd say maybe sixty. 60 miles at the most. Right. So yeah, it's yeah. N- near enough to, to the setting that you're, you know, it doesn't seem like you have to go on a teleportation circle or anything nope. like that. You'll just travel down the road. No, yep. You hop on a little wagon and truck on, truck on down. And make sure you bring some books with you. Make sure you bring some books. Yeah. And you know, that's one of the things we put in the adventure is like, you know, be sure that there are some cool books that people can find because they're going to need their, their price. I also like the idea of writing your own book just to get into Candlekeep. <laughs> right? Because hey. what's the definition of a book? Is yeah. It, you know, is yeah. it something that, uh, uh, a book of poems? Yeah. There might be the crappiest poems ever, but it's a book that they don't yeah. have. And I mean, I think that's, that's, uh, that's a, you can make a case for that. Yeah. You know, you just show up with the monk and be like, hey, this is legit. And <laughs> if, if it is, if it's not done, uh, I think if it's done earnestly, then I think uh, the, the monks monks will let you in. I think uh, it's uh, it's another way to tie it back into yeah. Waterdeep Dragon Heist and have uh, a Volo write some some book for yeah. you to, yeah. to put in there. Yeah, just hope you don't get the grumpy monk that day. <laughs> He's just like, oh, yeah, I've seen this one. Yeah, <laughs> seen this, this is before. derivative of his other work. Yeah, that's right. It's not a real book. Yeah, it's like the... The, the the grumpy college professor that when, you know, I was like writing my paper like at three o'clock that morning and they're just like, dude, really? No. Like, this is not going to, this is not going to cut it. That was a hard lesson I learned. I remember my <laughs> professor, she was like, I had totally flaked on this, this one paper and I tried to write it at the last minute and, uh, and I handed it in and she just tore it, tore me to pieces. And it was great because at that point I was like, yeah, this is not the way I want to present right. myself. The monks at Candlekeep would, uh, would, would, would yeah. not look 
kindly on that, but I'll do you one better. It's a little bit off topic from our Louis Chanel, but yeah. I wrote a paper uh, for uh, an English uh, professor, yeah. and I totally bl- flaked on the, th- we were supposed to write three papers, I wrote two, yeah. uh, and I flaked on the third one, and it was supposed to be like our final. And I was like, oops, didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't write it. And so, you know, the, the, the guy was my advisor, so he gave me like an incomplete, and he's like, all right, as long as you get it to me by the end of next semester, it should be fine. I got to the end of the next semester, and I had those two papers, and I'm like, hmm. I'm just going to turn in one of those papers again and see if he remembers. <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> so I got I, I, I skated by on turning in the same paper twice. Oh, my God. Uh, and uh, I don't think uh, he would be a good monk at Candlekeep. No, he would not. <laughs> my teacher, on the other hand, would be a great monk. But, oh, my gosh. She taught me a great lesson. That was that was a thing that, that, that stung for a while. And, yeah. uh, from, and ever since that moment, I was like, okay, I've got to bring my A-game every nice. time. So. And you've been doing it here uh, uh, oh, on the D&D team. I hope so, yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, try. Uh, thank you for uh, telling me all about what's going on in Candlekeep. What uh, is your, I mean, I feel like I've asked you four times, what's your Twiddle Hander so that people can ask oh. you about Candlekeep if they wanted to uh, delve your knowledge it's, more? It's uh, at Adam of Adventure. Excellent. Well, yes. I hope more people ask how they can get into your personal candle keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like uh, I've I've got all this like all these uh, pages of candle keep, and uh, you know, so depending on how deep the dive, like it's not all in my 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 accessible memory right now. But right. Uh, yeah, I can always hit the books and find out. All kinds of crazy details. Yeah, awesome. it's weird. Like, uh, and, you know, some of our resource materials. Um, you know, Ed Greenwood has letters from Ed Greenwood just saying, "Hey, this is what you know, Kendall keeps all about," and they're fun to read. They yeah. are fun. Yeah. yeah, he has got a you know, similar to you. He's got a wealth of knowledge that is in oh his head, gosh. but then also uh, yeah. on you know thousands of pages that he's created. Oh my gosh, yeah. I know. Uh, excellent stuff. Well, he would definitely be a monk. Uh, oh, since my gosh. he is a librarian. Isn't yeah, he, he is. is he in is his like actual legit real life librarian. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I feel like it holds a special part in his in his uh, setting yeah. for that reason. Yeah, I've never I haven't had chance ever to sit down with Ed and chat, but that would be probably the first question I'd ask him. Is just like, oh, Creighton Calgary was that just like basically the first thing you made? You know, right. <laughs> like. And uh, I know, like Forgotten Realms was sort of like he created that as a kid. Yeah. But, you know, like later on, you know, when he became an actual librarian, like which came first? Right. Candlekeep or you being a librarian. So, yeah. Maybe both. Maybe they have it simultaneously. Well, thank you. And uh, we'll be back with some more lore you should know next week.